Hi, I'm Eric and I do everything like a session of a classic peanut butter and jelly sandwich. -it. Someone named my peanut butter jelly sandwich. <laughs> yeah, what am I supposed to do now? Try a new sandwich? <laughs> no, the classics are always better. For example, the Tales of games. The Tales of series has been a shining star for anime games for pretty much the entirety of video game history. With ups, downs, and no. However, there are two Tales of games that are out of rage nowadays, the classic Tales of Japonia for the GameCube and the brand new Tales of the Rise that just came out recently. Both of these games are so similar, I mean they both are in the same genre, they both have similar settings, and both have main characters with questionable fashion choices. Durr, I'm a sneaky attack guy in the forest, let me wear red! And you, emo fantasy wannabe, bunk. Ahem, <clears throat> however, which game is better though? Nope, I like caution drama, so let's start with the Starting with Tales of Saponia, the story is definitely one of the strong points of this game, as it essentially takes a look at traditional JRPG story elements and beats the frick out of it and throws it into a shell. With sharks, and lava, and freaking lava sharks. Funnily enough, the first act of Tales of Saponia pretty much gives you that generic premise of, ooh, you're the chosen one destined to save the world from the evil baddie? Shocker! However, wait, what's this? I'm not playing as the chosen one, I'm the childhood friend of the chosen one. This aspect of storytelling in general is so unique and awesome, as I'm sure you can already imagine a bunch of humor instances and in parts of the story in which you're cast aside in favor of the chosen one, which is something that never got old throughout the story in this game. There is also a serious aspect to it as well, as according to his legend, this girl must sacrifice herself in order to save the world from the baddie in this game. And of course with the character we play as being the childhood friend of this girl, he wants to figure out a way to save her. The childlike stubbornness of the main character is something that really makes this story so unique, and even makes you think, wait, yeah, these villagers want to brutally sacrifice a little girl to save the world? <sighs> what the fruity loopy first is wrong with these guys? Oh, so you like sacrificing little girls for your own benefits. Interesting. Speaking of hate, the villain. The Tales of games are notorious for changing up the formula with the villains of the story and somehow make them relatable rather than, ooh, shiny world. Let's make it go blasty blasty because the whole world is after me, Wham! The villain of Tales of Saponia is Lord Jakesville, who wants to erase ethnic distinctions with the power of magic and technology. We're staying, that totally sounds like something someone would try to do in real life. Well, besides the fact that magic doesn't really assist in real life, but you get the picture. The villain in this game is a good person with a flawed mindset rather than an evil monster hating the world and wanting to take over it, which is something that only arguably became popularized and notable with Tales of Saponia, which gives the story such a unique perspective. <laughs> Wait, does the story in Tales of Arise? The story in Tales of Arise? Yeah. <laughs> Firstly, I would like to say it's not a bad story, far from it. It's honestly that's the same thing we expect from RPGs in general. Ooh, good guy needs to be bad guy who's morally evil and wants to take over the world because he's mad and only thinks he can move? Sound freaking familiar, folks? Okay, contest. Donna and Rina are planning to leave peacefully until one day Rina was like, Oh my gosh. Let's save Donna and take the natural resources. Along comes emo fantasy guy with no memories who come across generic love interest to... Well, um... I actually don't know, as the story has some serious cases of identity crisis throughout the story. One chapter, the motive is to regain emo fantasy guy's memories. Another chapter is to save Donna like, <laughs> make up your mind game. You're more questionable and confusing than the entire development of freaking Jump Force. Freaking jump force! Okay, well, there is still the plot twist of who Emo Fantasy Guy really is, and it was something I was not expecting and genuinely surprised me, which I obviously won't get into due to, well, spoilers. But with the story feeling like every RPG in comparison, the good versus pure evil aspect, characters repeat the same morals and values over and over again, and generic romance interests. Yeah! It's a good story filled with generally great plot twists, even better than plot twists of Tales of Japonia in my opinion. But looking at the bigger picture, Tales of Japonia just has unique charm with the overall story and overall meaning of the game, making me give the story point to Tales of Japonia. Oh man, that was a long rant. I am hungry. <laughs> oh, would you still eat the sandwich bit? Sure, Timmy. Timmy! <laughs> this has dog food in it. <laughs> That's the conclusion you came to? God darn it! Just move on to the... 
Boy, was that transition lame. But you want to know what isn't lame? The fact that Tales of Rise innovated the gameplay to modern standards perfectly, which is something I gotta commend the game for, as playing this game generally was an amazing experience that I have not gotten from an anime game in a long time. For example, it's more fast and fun, it doesn't waste your time with long transformation scenes, and the experience for fighting actually feels rewarding. Making grinding experience points and battling not a pain at all, which is honestly rare for a game like this. The weapons are super awesome as well, I mean come on, a kick butt woman with laser guns? What's not to love about that? Speaking of weapons and upgrades as well, while upgrading is somewhat important, you don't need to do constant experimentation or much grinding to get the best armor and weapons in the game, as it comes naturally, which means I don't have to sell my soul to get the best stuff. <laughs> You know, it's nice to play a modern game like this that doesn't concern you with getting all the best stuff right away and only playing one specific way in order to, well, beat the game. And with the improved item drop rate, staff boost, and the ability to swap abilities between accessories, which... Thank goodness that's a thing, because you know how many times I had to do that thanks to my own stupidity? I mean, my experimented nature, um... Timmy, where was I? <laughs> ah... No! Yes, Tales of Saponia has gameplay, and I don't know if this is a controversial opinion or not, but I absolutely love the gameplay of this game. And that's thanks to one aspect of the game, the combat stripping engine. Usually throughout the game, you'll have two or three party members, and you can control them with this stripping engine that allows you to give them orders whenever they could fight, defend, sacrifice themselves, etc. And this is an aspect in Tales of Saponia that, if done right, could turn this game into a clunky RPG game into something really unique. Plus, who could resist the temptation to go all leaders from Kogias like and control whether Genius Super League goes bye bye or not? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of bleh, one of the worst aspects of the gameplay, in my personal opinion, was the overworld map, which is just not fun and honestly feels like a waste of time. Yeah, I get it, you're on an adventure and you need to get from one place to a nest, but just compare how Zelda Ocarina of Time does it as opposed to this game. Traveling from one place to another actually feels natural as opposed to this wannabe Zelda overworld map that just makes everything seem fake and just downright annoying to travel, especially since it's hard to avoid enemies due to how the overworld was structured. This game thinks it's freaking Zelda! When it comes to the main aspect of the fighting though, the battles itself, it definitely isn't freaking Zelda. And it's all thanks to the multi-line linear mulching battle system, which is a system that mainly focuses on you being able to control character across one line while enemies can freely roam the area attacking. The gameplay is really reliant on experimentation and teamwork. What works for one fight wouldn't necessarily work for another one, which is honestly really awesome considering for most RPGs, you just need that one overpowered character to win the game and not anything else. Take Pokemon for example, what's the point in training hard with all assist Pokemon when you really have one overpowered Pokemon to win everything? This game doesn't allow you to do that, no. Instead it focuses on the power of teamwork, yep teamwork. That's right Pokemon, you got no teamwork. Hear that Ash? That's right, Pikachu, burn it. Charmander, burn it. Boba Dum Dum, Lava Sharks, Lava Sharks, Lava Sharks. All joking aside, Tales of Saponia is an amazing game that still holds up for those willing to put blood, sweat, and tears into the game for a perfect strategy. But Tales of the Rides allows you to get that same enjoyable feeling with the gameplay without that annoying clunky mess you have to go through to win. Meaning that for the overall gameplay, I have to give this one to Tales of the Rides for being much more accessible with the gameplay. Alright, we will 1v1 on each side. I need some other aspects to judge the game on. <laughs> Help to me! <sighs> Fine. Oh, I got it. How about... When it comes to innovation, the Tales of games are notoriously good at coming up with something unique to shake up the formula. Take the first games in the Tales of series for example. These games were innovated, however the execution wasn't always the best. Take Tales of Fantasia for example, it was so unique for its time. However, due to the poor execution of your allies being oh so annoying and idiotic during battles, it ended up being the perfect game with one annoying thing that ruined the entirety of the game. The other games before Tales of Saponia either had that one annoying mechanic that made it unbearable or not being innovated at all. Ooh, Final Fantasy is a theme? Boom, totally legit game. This is where the innovation of Tales of Saponia comes to the picture. Like I mentioned earlier, Tales of Saponia revolutionized how RPG games should be. Fantasy games often present to someone as heroic, the guy to save the world from Evo, the friggin' perfect ladies man with one flaw that somehow made him relatable. However, Tales of Saponia does not do that. The hero is not you 
in the story, you were just a child who just so happens to want to save your childhood friend from being sacrificed and somehow ends up being one to save the world through a childlike innocence. The main character and villain have similar goals to end discrimination, to end putting people down based on their beliefs, to end the whole concept of people becoming victims in the first place. However, these people live two very different lives, so despite having similar goals, they couldn't be any more different on how they executed the same beliefs. This is an issue that we just have not seen in video games before, which is what makes this game oh so appealing. This game is innovative to not only RPG or family games, but just video games in general. Mario doesn't do this, Mario doesn't need to. Dude, it's a me, Chris Pratt, I mean Mario, who's saving a princess from a turtle. That's what Mario is. Tales of Saponia gets his identity from the innovative story aspect combined with the unique gameplay we are very used to in the Tales of games, which is something we have not seen before in a fantasy game. I mean, fantasy is called fantasy for a reason, it's supposed to be unbelievable. An average man does it to save a hot girl? No, screw that. Tears of Saponia does the exact opposite of that. Zed still gives that RPG fantasy charm we all know and love. Tales of Arise is a better game, no doubt about that. The gameplay is much better, it looks awesome, and it's a game way more people will complete rather than Tales of Saponia. It's just in a way. Tales of Arise also makes me fear for the future of RPGs in the Tales of series in the future as well. Sure, it's clean, it's less annoying, it's much more fun, but where's the creativity? Where's the thing that makes it different from other games like Final Fantasy VIII, which pretty much has the same story and the same kick by female girl with pink hair? Where's that quote unquote Breath of the Wild treatment to revolutionize the series and genre as a whole? It just doesn't have that, and it's such a shame. Imagine the story from Tales of Saponia with the gameplay mechanics of Tales of Arise. I guarantee you it would be considered one of the best games of all time. Heck, quite possibly the best game of all time if I'm being honest. Hear that, Ocarina of Time? That's right, you better be scared, Linky Link, in your little tootie toot. To summarize, I don't think Tales of Arise is a bad game. Heck, I think it's better than Tales of Saponia. But if you're going to abandon the spirit of the last game in favor of making a masterpiece, what's the point of calling it a Tales of game then? So yeah, I have to give the innovation point to Tales of Saponia, which quote unquote makes Tales of Saponia the better game. Which is something I honestly disagree with looking back at all those little whining rants I did, as like I said, Tales of Arise is the better game. So who really wins, Tales of Arise or Tales of Saponia, new versus nostalgia? Well, I'll be honest with you, I cannot make up my freaking mind. But I don't have to, as both of these games have amazing strengths and mediocre weaknesses. Sure, I'm down to try new stuff, what is it? This is awesome! You said it had bananas in it, right, Timmy? Well, no wonder why it makes me go... Bananas.